Hi there. Hello, everybody. It is Winning Wednesday. Tonight, we're talking about Raynard's disease. My name is Regina, MSNRN, and I'll be your professor tonight. If you're here, you have the desire to, number one, take the NCLEX exam, and then number two, pass the NCLEX exam and do it as easy as possible. You want the information that's going to help you be successful. So we will be going over part of my NCLEX review program. This part is coming from QuickFox. Yes. So if you have the QuickFox book, Raynard's disease is on what page, everybody? Let me know in the comments, okay? Um, but if you read it, you're going to get the structure of Raynard's disease, especially if you are a reader. And I think that's why traditional books will never go out of style when you're preparing for the NCLEX exam. It's so good to have those traditional learning tools um, such as books, okay? Never be afraid of a good book. It can change your life. So you guys are telling me it's on page 76 for Raynard's disease. Let me take a look. Yeah, Raynard's disease is on page 76. So as you can see, this section is not that robust here, meaning that the, sh the, the information for Raynard's disease is pretty simple. Now, where I'm going to challenge you is in prioritizing Raynard's patients in a little while and then prioritizing their care. So I want you to make that connection between the symptoms of Raynard's and then the prioritization that comes along with it. So let's get into it. Hi, everybody from all over California. I see Portland, Oregon is asking, is there anyone like me here? <laughs> Raynard's disease, guys. Let's go. So um, and again, this is for the Remar nurses who are endeavoring they don't want to struggle anymore. If you're struggling, if you've been waiting too long to get this thing going, this is part of the program course, just you showing up. Everybody who's here today is on a mission to be better prepared, okay? And if you are here and you're not in one or two places, you're either in the V2 studying with me or you're in the free trial. I always talk about the free trial because literally whenever I say free trial, we have about 100 students who will go and sign up. So sometimes people just need to know there's a free trial to the program. Check it out at remarnurse.com. I really want to help you make sure you get on the right track. And let me just say something about the program because I talked to a young lady today who was doing the V2 and she said, Regina, I, I don't feel like I'm ready. I did the V2 and I don't feel like I'm ready. So this may speak to somebody out there who's doing the V2. Now, whenever I hear somebody say, after taking my program that they don't feel ready, I'm going to ask these questions, okay? I'm gonna ask these questions. So the first question I asked her was, did she finish V2? And she said, yeah, I finished. Cause we're talking, you know, we're talking on text short form. She's like, yeah, I finished V2, but I don't feel ready. I said, okay, did you take the computer adaptive exam? She said, uh, no, I didn't take the computer adaptive exam because I did V2 in a week, okay? so. Here's my thing, just because you can do V2 in a week doesn't mean you should do V2 in a week. Does that make sense? Just because, because she said, oh, the videos are short and to the point, I loved them and I just did it all in a week. Okay, so my response to her was, um, yeah, so you did it in a week and you don't feel ready. That means that you should not move forward with taking that exam, right? Because even if you could do the videos, like you guys know, like even if you could do the videos in V2 in a week, right? These videos, you can do them, okay? They are not very long. They don't take all day for you to do them. They're still quick facts, okay? They're still the question bank. They're still the computer adaptive exams. So when you're doing Remar program, it means that you are taking the time to do all of those components. And she told me she did the videos, but she was using other things for the question bank and other things like that. You guys know that's why you wouldn't feel prepared if you're piecemealing your NCLEX review, okay? So though the idea is that you're transformed at the end of the process. And part of that is making sure that you do the work. So. Showing up to class like this is part of that work. It's part of the work, okay? Um, so again, you're either in the free trial or you're in the V2 right now. Uh, 
Nurse Bray says, hi, everyone. I'm so excited because I passed my NCLEX RN last week. Oh, thanks be to God. And thank you, Remar. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, another testimonial. Hi, I passed my NCLEX with 130 questions. That's all the way. That's almost to the end. You almost got all the questions. I want to thank you so much for helping me to understand the content through V2 and your Monday and winning Wednesday. God bless you. LVN Remar Nurse. Love that. Love that. Anybody else? Uh, Grace says, hi, Regina. I got my V2 in Quick Facts in the UK. Um, I do. How, are you asking how do I use Quick Facts? I've started on V2. OK, I'll tell you in a little bit. Let me let me answer the question and the answers after class. Let's get into Raynard's disease. I promise it won't take us long to do this subject. And then once you do it, check it off. It's done. OK. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, Lori. I got, I got to read Lori's. <laughs> Lori, I don't want you to leave now that you pass. Hi, Regina, stopping by to say I passed my NCLEX last week with 85 questions. Thank you for your amazing program. Oh, my goodness. Where are Lori's testimony? Thank you for your amazing program. Lori, thank you so much, okay, um, for letting me know that you passed your exam. Okay, Ah. Uh, there it is. Thank you for your amazing program. I will be definitely back when I start the RN program. Very good. Very, very good. Okay, everyone. Raynard's disease. We have almost 600 nurses. Keep sharing. So when we talk about Raynard's disease, remember that Raynard's disease is essentially vasospasms that happen in the periphery. Whenever I say periphery, I'm talking about um, the, the toes, the, the fingers, the hands. Okay. All right. Because this is a condition that often gets confused with what? NCLEX will compare this Raynard's disease where you have discoloration of your extremities, um, not, well, not extremities, your digits, okay, um, to another condition. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. So essentially what happens is there is a vasoconstriction that happens when the patient is cold or stressed or sometimes they don't even know why it happens, but it affects the fingers, the toes, and the cheeks of the patient. Now, this typically happens in young people, in young people. So 15 to 30 year old and most commonly seen in females, most commonly seen in females. So again, this is one of the subjects in Quick Facts, tap in, you do need to know this. You do need to know this. Um, and correct, I saw the comment. I asked, what is Raynard sometimes confused with or mixed up with? And it is burgers. It is burgers uh, disease as well, which is also in your Quick Facts book. Okay. So the risk factors, everybody, I'm so happy that you're here for class. The risk factors are being a female, talked about that, having family history, Smoking, we know smoking contributes to vasal constriction and then cardiovascular disease, migraines, and metabolic disorders. What does that mean, right? What does that mean? These are the things that will cause a patient to present with Raynard's. Now, Raynard's disease and Raynard's phenomenon they are going to present the same. The cause, though, is going to be the interesting thing. So if a person has Raynard's disease, we are not sure what is the cause of it. It's idiopathic. If a person has Raynard's phenomenon, then this syndrome is secondary to something else. So when something is secondary, it means that it is caused by another condition. There are some um, rheumatologic diseases that cause this. I think I saw somebody in the comments saying I have lupus and I, then I also get this. And so that would be a, a phenomenon that would be secondary, uh, medications, toxins, hematologic problems, vascular trauma, and thyroid issues can also cause, uh, Raynard's phenomenon. Now, remember when we are discussing, uh, medical conditions, the terminology that I use is appropriate for nursing students at a um, graduate level. So that means you've graduated nursing school or you're close to graduating nursing school. So it is my expectation that if I say something is hematologic, that you understand that term. 
if you don't ever understand the term that I'm using, a medical term that I'm using, you know your responsibility is to write it down and look it up, okay? Write it down and look it up. The, you have to put the expectation on yourself to be prepared for NCLEX. Nobody else can take this exam for you. So you need to take every opportunity to study like you're doing right now, just showing up for class, okay? So free class, why not? I'm here to learn. So that's the difference between Raynard's disease and Raynard's phenomenon. The phenomenon is going to be secondary to something else. So the clinical manifestations are going to be progressive cutaneous spasms. You're going to have digit color changes. The digit colors can be white, blue, or red. Um, the thumbs, though, generally is very interesting because with Raynard's, the thumbs are rarely affected, okay? Thumbs are rarely affected the patient will report the sensation of pins and needles, a pins and needles feeling. So how do you diagnose, how do you diagnose Raynaud's disease? Raynaud's disease is diagnosed in a clinical component. When, let me, let me ask you this. When we talk about clinicals, when we find out that we are going to clinicals in nursing school, what does that mean? If something is clinical or you will be clinical, what does that term mean? We just, we say it all the time, don't we? We are always talking about clinical, okay? Ah, I love it. I see the comments coming in. So, the term clinical just by itself is the observation of a patient, right? So your clinical exam is based off of your observation of a patient. When we go to do, I like that, Ebony. When we're, when we're going to clinicals, okay, we do classroom and then we do clinicals. So in classroom, like here, we're learning, we're hearing it, we're talking about it, we're discussing it. In clinicals, we get to what? We get to see it. We get to observe it. It's great that we can do hands-on, but um, clinicals don't always mean hands-on. We do that in the lab, right? The, lab, the practice lab, that's the hands-on. So the clinical is looking at the physical appearance of a person. You're observing them in that environment, okay? And so one of the things that I like to do here for you is really elevate your comfort level as a nurse is really to take that understanding to the next level. A part of that is just understanding the language. You have to understand this language that you are expected to know. Okay. It'll make you feel so much more confident, make you feel so much more confident. So how do we diagnose Raynard? It is a clinical diagnosis, meaning for the majority of it, we're going to be doing a history and a physical. Okay. Uh, ruling out secondary um, Raynard's phenomenon. So also making sure that the patient doesn't have any, um, what, what do we say, any uh, rheumatologic conditions, looking at the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Yeah, making sure there's no antibodies that are developing. Mm -hmm. Diagnosis is indeed clinical. Diagnosis is clinical. Nail fold capillary microscope examination. You may or may not have heard of this. However, it is a thing, but it's a really simple thing. And we can just learn about it just by looking at the name. So um, nail fold capillary microscopic examination, looking at the nail fold, okay? And, and this essentially the nail fold is here. This is your nail fold. It's kind of like where your nail meets the nail bed. And in the unpolished finger, the capillary bed is very visible under a light. Like if you, if you don't have nail polish on your nails, you probably can look at your nail bed and see, see little capillaries. So what the doctor does is essentially he takes a flashlight um, and he puts it okay on that nail bed and he's able to see it's usually hooked up to a computer that blows it up right um, and he's able to see what those capillaries look like yeah you're looking under the skin to see if you have normal capillary function or if you have large like enlarged capillaries and so this is done 
um, to determine also if you have primary Raynaud's phenomenon or secondary Raynaud's phenomenon. All right, so let's um, let's move on for that. I just wanted to just do a little quick blurb on it, just in case you saw it in your um, in your uh, study or in your case study uh, chart findings. Right, you would know what it was. So our findings and assessments, remember differential diagnosis means that these two things look the same, but they are not the same. So Raynard's and Berger's disease, what is similar about them? Well, you are going to have a risk factor of smoking. You are going to have that digit color change. In Berger's disease, though, the peripheral pulses will be diminished. In Raynard's phenomenon, you are going to have symmetrical changes, meaning both hands will be the same, okay? Both hands, you're going to have a symmetrical presentation. That's good stuff right there. Anytime we are trying to treat something, there is always a medical way to treat it. Well, actually, there's three ways to treat something. Um, there's going to be a non-medical way, so non-pharmacological, meaning no drugs. There's going to be a pharmacological way to treat it, right? And then there's going to be a surgical way to treat it. So this is why you have your MICUs and your SICUs. You have medical intensive care units and you have surgical intensive care units. Um, and so here when we're talking about Raynard's disease, the non-pharmacological the no medicine way that we are going to treat this is, of course, of course, avoiding the triggers. So avoiding cold, warming the entire body. OK, but not not just the not just the fingers. It's wrong to just think you just need to warm up the hands. You need to warm up the entire body as a whole. It's a great teaching point. Avoiding traumas, vibrating tools, avoiding stress, avoiding smoking. And during the attacks, warming the body up for 15 to 20 minutes. The pharmacological ways are going to be to give the um, give the medications again. So we're talking about calcium channel blockers, nifedipine, amylodipine. These calcium channel blockers help with um, the perfusion of the heart to get the circulation pumping. Also, also the fosfodiesterase type five inhibitors, these medications, we know um, sildenafil, we know that these medications can be used for erectile dysfunction, which are also very powerful, essentially vasodilators that will help with Raynard's disease. Your nursing priorities are going to be to make sure that there is adequate skin temperature in the affected areas. Also, conserving adequate collateral circulation in this patient, very important. Avoiding skin breakdown, making sure that the patient can perform normal activities and helping them to demonstrate coping skills effectively, because this is a scary situation to have and it affects your mental. Prevention, what are the things we tell these patients to do to prevent Raynard's disease, dress warmly in cold weather. Well, that just makes sense. Wear mittens, gloves, or oven mitts. We got to keep those hands warm and warm up the car before driving in the winter. Ah, there's two types of people who... who have winter. There are people who warm up lights before there's other people who don't. They just jump right into the car. They don't need to warm up their car. They don't mind driving around in a cold, icy car. So which one are you? Which one are you? Frozen? Okay. All right. You don't, you don't mind being frozen in there. So that that is, those are teaching points. Things that we don't want our patients with Raynard's disease to do is get exposed in the cold, endure stress that is avoidable, and 
avoiding using tobacco or tobacco products, which are vasal constrictors. So that just makes sense. That just makes sense. All right, we're at our first question, guys. Here it is. We're going to warm up. We're going to warm up is this. A client is suspected of having Raynard's disease. Which action should the nurse take to determine associated symptoms of Raynard's disease? Okay. Number one, check for brittle nails. Two, monitor irregular heart rate. Three, observe digit skin changes. Four, inspect for rashes on the hands. Welcome everybody, tap in. I see some of my regulars that are popping up with the answers. I'm happy that you're here for class today. I know you have your alarm set so you don't miss these questions. This is us trekking through, okay? This is us trekking through. I see a lot of threes on the screen. I'm kind of happy about that. I'm kind of happy about that because the re correct answer is indeed number three. Three, that was number three. Okay, this is just an easy question. That was an easy one. I'm warming you up. Raynard's disease is the basal spasms of the arterioles and arteries of the upper and lower extremities. So what happens is it produces closure of the small arteries in the distal extremities causing digit color changes. Okay, sometimes they're white, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're red, um, but that's what's happening. I saw this really great question somebody asked and somebody said, hey, if all of this is in this, why am I here? What are we coming here for if we have this information in quick facts? Well, let me tell you, the reason why you come here after reading it is because, I don't know, why are you guys here? I don't know. So this is my thing. The reason why I do these classes is to help support you on the journey. Because yes, you can read this book by yourself or you could come to a huge study session and hear it verbally as well. Because if you're an audio learner, that's going to help you, right? And then you get to press into the understanding of, do I really know this like I need to know it? Or do I need to go back and look at it again, right? So, uh, and I like that too. And for the motivation too, and to get more detail. And somebody says, and you explain it differently than in the book. So all those things are why, you show up to class on Mondays and Wednesdays. And like T. Rob says, to enforce what we've been studying, right? So if you're in here, you don't have the book, then it might not make much sense. But if you do have the book, then you know, ah, I needed to be here for this. Okay, so I warmed you up. So now I'm about to press into you a little bit more about Raynard's because I feel like you could take it. So here's the next question. Uh-huh. In identifying triggering factors, for Raynard's disease attacks, which of the following questions should the nurse ask? I'm not going to let you see my face, so I don't give it away. Okay. Anyways, you're trying to identify triggers for Raynard's disease attacks. Which of the following questions should the nurse ask? Number one, do you experience the symptoms while sleeping? Two, are your activities being limited with the symptoms? Three, do you experience the symptoms when exposed to heat? Or four, do you take metformin as maintenance? Mm. I love a good NCLEX question. <laughs> okay. I told y'all, Raynard seems really straightforward, but then you get questions like this and you got to think your way out of this paper bag. Can you do it? Can you do it? Okay, so, and, and this is it, guys. This is where the rubber meets the road because the challenge of NCLEX is reading, okay? The challenge of NCLEX is reading for the correct idea. The correct answer for this is number four, okay? Now, let's talk about why it's number four because num the question is asking, you're trying to identify triggers for Raynard's attacks, okay? You're trying to identify triggers. So one of the risk factors of Raynard's was what? It was other diseases. It was other diseases. It was metabolic diseases. Let me go back and look. 
Okay. And this is why it was so important. We got to slow down. We got to read. I'm glad you came to class today. Number one says, do you experience the symptoms while sleeping? Okay. Do you experience the symptoms while sleeping? Is sleeping a risk factor? Two, are your activities being limited with the symptoms? Okay. That's not asking about a trigger. That's asking about the after effects, after a trigger. Three, do you experience the symptoms when exposed to heat? I like this question, right? Um, but we know that with Raynards, it's not when they're exposed to heat, it's when they're exposed to what? Cold. Four, do you take metformin as maintenance? Uh, what is metformin used for? Okay, what is metformin used for? Metformin is used for diabetes mellitus, right? And so when the body is under stress, okay, when you're a diabetic, your body's under stress, right? You have hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, right? That can trigger vasoconstriction, okay? And so this question is really tricky, right? It's really tricky if you just go for whatever you think is right as opposed to what you're being asked. We're looking for risk factors. You get it? You get it? Okay. That's all I want. I don't I don't expect you guys to get every question right, but when I explain it, I want to make sure we end up on the same page. Okay? That's good. That's good. We're doing good. All right, I'm going to move on to the next question. They're only going to get more challenging because I told you Reynard seems easy, but I can write questions that will <laughs> be very challenging as I did tonight. Number three. Uh, yeah, number three. The nurse is caring for four patients. They all have Raynard's disease. Which patient is the highest priority? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Number one, the client with numbness and tingling and white discoloration of the fingers. Two, the client with numbness and tingling and blue discoloration of the fingers. Three, the client with numbness and tingling and blue discoloration at the fingertips only. Or four, the client with numbness and tingling with blue and white discoloration at the fingertips only. Mm -hmm. Who is our priority here? We in this Remar Nurses, this is what we do every Wednesday. Mondays and Wednesdays is my favorite time of the week, okay? Because we get to really dig into content. <laughs> content. I see the answers on the screen. I'm so glad I did this question because y'all are wrong, okay? This answer is wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. But that's okay. That's why we're here, okay? So what I want to encourage you guys to do is if you, um, if you don't know this information, write it down. Make sure you don't leave here missing these very important points because this is, remember I said Raynard's is clinical and so NCLEX is going to test you on clinical information, which is, what did I tell you? It's observation, okay? And I see the comment. These patients are in fact very different. These are very different patients and the worst patient is extremely obvious, okay? So the correct answer is number one. Number one, number one, okay. Um, let me do this, here we go. Okay, so I put this picture here, let me get out the way. Which patient is the priority? Okay, which patient is the priority here? You got patient A, they got white fingers. You got patient B, they got blue fingers. Who's the priority? Ah, okay. So clearly, A, don't got nothing going on in those fingers. Not a circulation of any kind. That's what white means clinically, right? When we talk about circulation, white is the worst. So I asked you the question, who is the highest priority? Number one is the client with numbness and tingling. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Everybody got numb, numbness and tingling, but they have white discoloration of the fingers. Two, 
blue discoloration of the fingers. And I think we get, you know, we, we get caught up in our, um, our ABCs and we think blue cyanosis, that's bad, right? But there's something worse than blue, okay? You might be learning this for the first time. There's something worse than blue and that's white. That means there is no blood flow. There is nothing there, okay? Um, three was blue at the fingertips. That was just a distractor. Um, and then four, I a little, little razzle dazzle there. And I said, they got blue and white. And a lot of y'all jumped for that distractor because you said, well, if you got both, that must be, that must be worse. But it, and indeed, it was just the white that was worse. It was just the white. That was the wrong one. Okay. So um, I'm going to show the picture again. So you understand that, again, if you have a patient who has a white extremity or a white digit, you might as well go ahead and cut that thing off. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's not going to, there's nothing going on there. The, there's no circulation. Do we get that? All right. And somebody said, and this is why we come to class for this. Um, it's clinical. This is clinical. All right. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I got to go. Question number four is this. A nurse is caring for four patients. Okay. Everybody has Raynard's disease again. The nurse needs to determine which client medication should be prioritized. Okay. Which of the following clients should receive their medication first? Which of the following um, clients should receive their medication first? So number one, a client with daily low dose aspirin. So think about what the, the, the function of aspirin is for. Okay. Two, a client prescribed nifedipine. Three, a client prescribed acetaminophen. Or four, a client prescribed an antidepressant for underlying depression. Okay, what do we have here? What say if the Remar nurses? Almost a thousand people are here on Winning Wednesday. That's phenomenal. Join up for class like this. On the road to passing NCLEX. Correct answer. Did you get this one? It is number two. The client prescribed nifedipine is going to help to dilate those small vessels. So remember the treatment that we can give for Raynard's disease is a cardiac medication. Uh, we're, we're worried about the constriction of blood flow. So something like nifedipine will help to dilate those blood vessels. If you have quick facts too, as well, the, the back of the book is pharmacology. I may, I may, I'm showing it because there's somebody here who does not have the book and that's okay. Um, but the back of quick facts is all is pharmacology. And so you will find your calcium channels back here for you to study. Okay, great, great job, everybody. We are moving on. Question number five is this, uh, what did I write here? Okay, so a nurse is overseeing the care of four patients. You know how I like to do it. Everybody has Raynard's disease. So there we go. Based on assessment data, which client should the nurse prioritize for immediate care? Number one, 25 year old who reports numbness in the fingers when jogging in cold weather. Two, 40 year old client with a history of hypertension currently experiencing stress induced paler in the fingertips. Three, 60 year old client complaining of severe pain in the toes after walking barefoot on the cold floor or or 35 year old who has paler discoloration in the fingers and reports difficulty in picking up objects. So we have four patients. They all have Raynard's. Who is the worst here? I love it. Love it. Love prioritization. It's not just about airway, breathing, circulation. That's played out. I know if I put airway, breathing, circulation, y'all will know. But if everybody got circulation issues, that's a little bit more challenging. Now we are, now we're in our clinical bag. Now we are looking at our clinical knowledge. That's all I'm doing here today. Everything I'm doing here is clinical. I'm asking you based off observation, 
who is the priority? Some of us never had these questions before. So we're struggling. If you feel like you're struggling, that's good. You're working out. You're in the right place. Okay, you're training. You're getting those muscles stronger. Correct answer here is, guess what? It's number four. It's number four. This is my clinical priority because I'm looking at this patient and they cannot function. Okay, they can't function. 35-year-old paler discoloration in the fingertips. I'm expecting that with um, I'm expecting that with Raynards, right? But now you can't pick up objects. What's going on with you? You have some functional impairment now. I got to call the doctor. I got to call the doctor, okay? Um and let's go back and let's look at the other choices cuz I I feel like I'm getting some pushback here about why it's number 4 and that's okay cuz we're here to talk about it. So number one, remember, we are looking for when everybody has the same problem, when everybody has the same diagnosis, what we are focusing in on is the unexpected reports. What is something that I'm not expecting the patient to have? OK, so number number one says this, which I make it big, 25 um, year old who reports numbness in the fingers when jogging. Ah. Okay, in cold weather. Am I expecting that with Raynards? Absolutely. Okay. Two, 40 year old. Now, what I did was I imposed another condition. Okay. I imposed hypertension on the Raynards patient. So, for some of you, um, seeing that hypertension there was like, okay, this person has two problems now even though I didn't say they were hypertensive. So what did this patient have? A history of hypertension. Okay, so that's great. But what are they currently reporting? And that's what we need to see. What is the current problem? The current problem is stress-induced paler. Now, stress-induced paler in the fingertips, is that expected or unexpected? Totally expected. For somebody with two core morbidities, OK, they have Raynard's and they have hypertension. So I already know that they're going to have stress induced paler. That's part of the diagnosis. OK, um, but a lot of people fell for that. OK, number three, 60 year old client, they're reporting severe pain in the toes after walking barefoot on a cold floor. Is that expected or unexpected? Ah, another expected person. What about four? Paler discoloration in the fingertips. Expected. Reports difficulty in picking up objects. Bingo. Ding, 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 ding. I'm stopping right here. I don't need to see nothing else. This is my priority patient. Because I don't expect you to have difficulty picking up objects. All right. That tells me that you might have some what? nerve innervation issues. You may have some, uh, I don't even know, like well, what's going on? Like, I don't even want to project what it is. I need to call the doctor. This is my priority patient. Okay. So are we all on the same page about that now? And again, this is part of taking, okay, taking your information to the next level. This is why, um, this is why you're here. You're here because you don't know everything. And I see a lot of people saying, man, I wasn't a safe nurse tonight. I'm not happy with my performance. I love you being in that place. You have to be able to evaluate yourself. You have to be able to, to say, do I need to take it to the next level? Some people might even have to say, hey, I need to, I need to push my test off because I thought I was comfortable, but there's some areas I could do better in. Like my prioritization, I can work on that a little bit more. And that's okay. Remember, that's what I told the young lady earlier today who said, I don't feel like I'm ready. OK, so the very best thing for you to do if you don't feel like you're ready, like inherently, you know, I, I haven't done all of the work I need to do. Push that test date, push that test date. OK, give yourself time to really prepare, because what you don't definitely want to do is go and take the NCLEX. Not confident, like you have to have the confidence to sit in there. And if you go in there already, like kind of shaky when you get that question and you like have no idea what's going on, your confidence is going to, it's going to plummet. 
And it's going to be hard for you to build up your confidence while taking a challenging test. Okay. So my whole goal tonight for a lot of you, because I know I have a lot of new people joining. Some, some of you guys, you've been here for a while, right? You, you know me. But the new people that are here, this gives you an opportunity to really be honest with yourself and say, have I been doing the difficult work, right? Have I been doing the stuff that you don't want to put on Instagram and TikTok, which is the hard stuff of, of <laughs> the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, okay? Um, and so that's all that this is about. That's all that this is about. If you're watching this and you're understanding what I'm saying, you can pass the NCLEX. That's, that's the great thing about it. If you understand what I'm saying and why things are the right answer, you're able to pass the NCLEX exam. Okay. But you're, you're in one or two places. You're either in my V2 or you're taking the trial of it so that you can get a full perspective of what it takes to pass the NCLEX. Come into these classes are good, um, but there is another work that has to be done. And I always tell you guys, the work of passing NCLEX is what you do by yourself, okay? It's what you do when you're home alone. Because when you go in to take that test, guess what? Uh -huh. You're home in your mind alone taking it, okay? So do the work, do the work, all right? Um, but, you know, again, RMPN, there's a program for you. Get into it. Get into it. We have a lot of great things coming up for the Remar nurses. The new year is almost here. Like literally the new year is almost here. Some of you will go into the new year license and you will have your license and that's going to be amazing for you. Um, other people were still going to be studying together, but that's the great thing. I'm not leaving you. God stay the same. I'm going to be here and we're going to push through it together. But it is so much easier when you have a place to go when you're not doing it by yourself, trust me, you go a lot further, okay, faster. You go a lot further, faster when you're with somebody helping you. So this is the small study session. Do the rest of it. But says, I hear you. I hear you. All right. Um, I'm late, too busy doing my V2. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. And so again, you guys can do this. It does take work. It's not easy for you to do, but tonight was a good way for you to evaluate. Am I ready to take the test? Do I need more work to do? Um, do I need to make sure? Yeah, yeah. Do I need to make sure that I need to go back? Some of you need to go back in here. There are videos that you need to watch again. Are you comfortable with the ECG? Okay, whether you're an RN or PN, you need to do that. Are you comfortable with legal issues, the delegation, the prioritization? We did a lot of prioritization work here but it was based off of something in the quick facts book. So wh what are you doing? Okay. Are you doing the lectures? Are you doing quick facts? Okay. The topic for tonight came from quick facts. We did a deep dive into one of the topics. When I come back on Monday, when I come back on Monday, we may be back in the V2. The whole idea though, is that you get through that study calendar in the time for you. Okay. And it may not be a week. Like I said, just because you can do my program in a week doesn't mean you need to do it in a week. If your if your exam is in a week and you're at the beginning of V2, don't try to rush through V2 to get it done. Move that exam date and give yourself more time to do it. Natalie says, I love my V2. Ah, I love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is the study calendar, guys. Okay. Easy 20 study sessions. You can get through these 20 study sessions. You will be transformed. You should be transformed. You should not be feeling like, oh, I'm not confident. All right. It is because there's a part of it that you have not done. All right. There's a part of it that you have not done. So make sure that you're using this the way that I intended for you to be. Four weeks. Can you give me proper? Oh, I, I need to answer this question. Uh, oh, Lighty, is this how you say it? Hi, Regina. Thank you, God, Regina and Mark, for your passion and dedication for us nursing students. I took my board last Friday and I passed it. Yes. All glory belong to God. Indeed, it does. Thank you again. OK, thank you again. And so somebody asked if I have quick facts. I, and if I have quick facts, Liddy, if you want to come on, just let me know. We can bring you on. Um, if I have this book, how do I use it with V2? So this is what happens. Some of you guys start with quick facts and then you realize 
that this is not the entire program, right? You realize there's more to the program. So you start with quick facts and you realize, and you see that quick facts has a study calendar. If you just have this book, then you have the study calendar here. Okay. Um, you can get this book on Amazon. This is quick facts for NCLEX. You can get it on Amazon or you can go to remarnurse.com if you don't have it. So anyways, Quick Facts has a study calendar. This is half of the program. So if you're just using this book, go ahead, okay? Go ahead. Now, there is more to the program. This is half of the program. I'm looking for my V2 workbook and I don't see it. But anyways, the V2 workbook goes with the videos here. So once you upgrade to the full program and you have the you have the videos, then you need to use the V2 calendar because the V2 calendar is going to tell you how to now incorporate quick facts into the videos, all right? Because like I tell you guys, the videos and quick facts are totally separate material. And if I had to tell you to focus on one, it would be the videos because the videos are me explaining to you how to think like a nurse. What are your priorities as a nurse? And that is going to help more people to be able to put in all the information inside of a framework, okay? That's the difference. And I know this is a challenge though, and I saw somebody make the comment, I already brought something else, but I so I can't do another program. I just wanna say to you, when you're talking about something as serious as your professional license, you have to, you have to be willing to make that um, investment into the preparation. Because the thing about it is when you are in an NCLEX review, but you're still looking at other things, it means there's something missing in what you're doing, right? You're still searching for a reason. What's that reason? right? You're still missing something. So prepare for it all the way. Okay. Prepare for it all the way. Move that test date. Don't feel rushed to go into something that you're not ready with. Okay. Don't feel rushed to go into something that you're not ready with. So that's it guys. Um, uh, what is everybody saying? How do I get the V2? Super easy. Just go to remarnurse.com, remarnurse.com. All right and tap in. And like I said, you can do the free trial. I have a free trial of my program. Okay. Do the free trial. This is my number, but I, let me stress this. The free trial of the V2 will tell you immediately if you have been studying the right way or not. The, 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 the free trial of the V2, let me tell you what it is. The free trial of the V2 is going to take you through all of pregnancy. Okay all of pregnancy. And that is going to really put you in a position to just jump off to the rest of, um, of the course. Okay. So go to remarnurse.com in order to do that. Guys, um, I agree. Oh, the audio book. I see. <laughs> but you know what? I literally have the, the 30 day challenge in the V2 as well. So if you guys do the 30 day challenge, I'm also going over a lot of information from the Quick Facts book in the 30 day challenge too. So if you like when I talk about Quick Facts in the V2, I do that in the 30 day challenge. You'll, you'll find it extremely helpful, okay? So that's it. Uh, thank you, Regina and Mark for all your motivation. Carlene, if I'm feeling stressed out reviewing, I'm always listening to your advice. I hope I can make it this time too. Absolutely, absolutely, all right? Absolutely, you can do it, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. I say that all the time because I really believe it. A lot of you right now who are struggling, it doesn't feel like you can pass NCLEX, but you can do it. Is it easy? No. Is it worth it? Always. I tell you, once you become a licensed nurse, your life is going to change for the better. Your life is going to change for the better. And nursing right now, you know, it's it, some people are, are, are concerned about, oh, are people just getting into it for money? because you do make a lot of money as a nurse, right? We know that. But what I find is that most people really, really, really who get into nursing actually have a passion to be there, actually have a passion to be there. And when you get into it with that type of heart as a ministry focus, 
it can take you places you never would have gotten to without your license. So you need this nursing license. But you need to be able to prioritize it in a way that you get it done as quickly as possible. Some of y'all already wasted too much time. You could have been past the NCLEX exam, but you keep putting other things in front of it. You keep putting other things in front of it. This process is sacrifice. You should be thinking, what can I cut out that's distracting me? Okay. What can I come out, cut out in my life that's keeping me away from this goal? It's the holiday season. It's the holiday season right now. You know how hard it is to study during Christmas? You know how hard it is for me even to show up to class. I know it's hard for you, but you got to do it. Okay. You got to do it. Um, because if you're out there buying toys for your kids, if you're out there buying Starbucks and all kind of things that are not contributing to the next level in your life, you got to prioritize it. You got to prioritize it out. Okay. Cause this right here is more important than any other job that you are working. Nothing's going to change your life the way the nursing profession will. All right. So you just make the decision. Stick with it. Pick your date. Stick with it. That's my encouragement for you guys. Go to remarnurse.com. Get in it with me. I'm going to be here on Monday. Are you going to be here on Monday? I'm going to be here on Wednesday. Are you going to be here on Wednesday? Make that decision now. I love it. Somebody said it's 3 a.m. here in the UK. That's what I'm talking about, Grace. That's what I'm talking about. That is a sacrifice. Okay. That's a sacrifice. Deborah says, hello, Professor Regina and Mark. I want to say thank you to God Almighty and you, pro, your program for helping me pass NCLEX. I, this is my favorite sentence to read. I am a Remar nurse. I love V2 and Quick Facts. Woo! Mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. You passed the NCLEX. You did it. Now it's the next level for you. And that's what I want for everybody here. I want everybody here to be able to have that testimony. That's why I asked you, who's next? I want you to say, I'm next. I want you to say, it's me, I'm next. I'm coming on to give my testimonial and then I'm out to my job or the next thing or my vacation or wherever you're gonna go after you get your license. But let's continue to grind it out, make smart decisions, make sacrifices, doesn't matter what the world is doing out there. You have a goal and nobody's going to come and hand you your nursing license. You've got to work for it. OK, I say this to I say this to my brother all the time. The only way to get to the top is by taking the stairs. There's no elevator that's going to pull you to the top. you got to grind it out. you got to take the stairs. So I'm walking the stairs. Y'all get on the stairs with me. We're going to the top. Right. We got to pass. With God, is possible. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.